for you to stand, everybody in this mighty congregation. I'd like for you to sing with me the theme song of Compassion Explosion. Love lifted me. to present the Don Stewart Compassion Explosion Choir singing It Is Well featuring Miss Bobby Williams Good
And now it is my privilege to present a singing group that across the nation, blessed multitudes, not only with their singing, but as they witness and work for Jesus. Sharon Peck and the Sunshine Singers. Give them a good welcome now. Now we come to a moment in this service that I know many of you have been very anxiously waiting for. It's my privilege to present the Gene Martin Trio, all led and directed by the man that sings more people happy than any other gospel singer in the world. Not only sings them happy, but often sings faith into the hearts of multitudes until miracles of healing and deliverance take place as he, with this great team of musicians and singers, sing faith into their hearts. A great preacher of the gospel and co-evangelist with Reverend Don Stewart in Compassion Explosion Revival, Reverend Eugene Martin. Give them all a good and welcome. It's a long, long, lonely journey. It's a long, long, lonely trip. Where did you get the idea you cut? Make it all by yourself. You're gonna need a guy, somebody, somebody by your side. Don't you know you need King Jesus? I ever reached up of the way. It's a long, long, lonely journey. It's a long, long, lonely trip. Where did you get the idea you could make it all by yourself? You gonna need a guy, somebody, somebody by your side. Why oh, don't you know you need King Jesus on every step of the way? How do you plan to live your heavenly love? Oh, be how? How do you plan to not be falls in the road? Don't you know you and me, King Jesus? I don't you know you and me, King Jesus? I never miss up on the way. Hey, hey, 
Blessed assurance, she in my heart. Oh, what a foretaste of glory, glory, glory divine. I'm an heir of salvation. Spirit, I've been washed in, in his blood. This is my story. This is in my Savior on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, oh, 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 long. This year, this year, this year, this year my story. Hallelujah. This year, Praising my Savior all, all the day long. The hand of the Lord is truly over Madison Square Garden tonight. And it's a pleasure and privilege tonight to bring to you a Christ-centered ministry, a young man that God has raised up in these days, a man that accepted the challenge of reaching lost souls for Jesus Christ, a man that is spearheading tonight the great phenomena that is shaking the world called Compassion Explosion. I want New York City to welcome your evangelist, Don Stewart to Madison Square Garden. They help me lift up Jesus. Somebody help me praise him. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. He's the Lily of the Valley. He's the bright and morning star. Shake somebody's hand and say a compassion explosion is happening to me right now.
some time ago the young man that plays the guitar for the sunshine singers was in our camp meeting at Miracle Valley his arm was in a cast he's a Baptist boy this is brother Jamie he plays the guitar for the sunshine singers a young man that came into our camp meeting with a broken arm Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> Tell us about it, Jamie. Tell us what God did for you. Well, three months ago, this arm was completely crushed. There was 12 bones that completely crushed, and the doctor said that it may never be the same again. So I prayed to God that, that He would heal it. And then I came to Don Stewart. And through, through his compassion he had for me, he prayed for me, and God came down in a, in a great way and, and filled me with the Holy Spirit. Now, Jamie, after we prayed, you did something with the cast, didn't you? Yes, I did. I took it, and I sawed it off of the hacksaw, and it's fine, and it's just great, and I thank Jesus. He just went to work, sawed it off with a hacksaw. Well, that's what happens when you can get a young man filled with the Spirit, turned on to Jesus. There's nothing too good, and there's nothing too wonderful to happen to a child of God. Clap your hands for Jesus. I feel the miracle working power of God here right now. Bring me that first wheelchair. Jesus is going to raise somebody up out of a wheelchair. Hallelujah. I feel the anointing of God here now. Somebody help me lift up the King of Kings. Somebody help me lift up the Lord of Lords. He's the lily of the valley. He's the bright and morning star. He's the sweet rose of Sharon. Jesus is his name. Jesus is his name. Hallelujah. He's the lily of the valley. He's the bright and morning star. I am not a healer. I could not heal a fly if it had a headache. But I've been talking to the healer all day long, and his name is Jesus Christ. Oh God. Jesus, stand by my side. Touch my little sister now. You have a couple of conditions wrong with you, don't yes, you? Yes, I do. I have a heart condition, I have arthritis, and, and I get shortness of breath, and I'm nervous at times. What about this swollen leg here? What's God going to do for you tonight? God's going to heal me, because I believe. That's what I come here, and I have faith in you. Where did you come this from? Washington. Washington, D.C.? Yes, I did. You come all the way from Washington, D.C. to receive the healing heal. touch of Jesus yes. Christ. Is he going to do it? Yes, he is. He is? Yes, he is. Can you see this little woman's faith? Can you see how she radiates this faith tonight? Jesus, you're the only one that can do it, Lord. I ask you to lay your hand upon her heart now. Let the healing virtue of Jesus Christ flow through this body. Heal her from this arthritis. And oh God, this bad leg that's so swollen up. Let the healing virtue of Jesus Christ flow through this body now. Lord, I believe you to touch her. I believe you to heal. I feel Jesus doing something. How many believe it's done? In Jesus' name! Oh, wow! Look at that! Yes! Jesus! Jesus!
Jesus. Everybody stand with me and praise the Lord with me. Lift up Jesus. Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the deliverer. Hallelujah. Let's talk to her a moment. What is your name? Helen Greenwell. From what's your address? 4123 7th Street Northwest. What's God done for you? He has healed my body, which I have been sick for two years. I've been going from hospital to hospital. But I thank God tonight that I'm healed. Thank you, Jesus. Look here, darling. Will, will you go back and get checked over, get it confirmed by a doctor, write me a letter so that we can publish your story yes, after it's been confirmed by medical science. Yes. Go your way. Your faith has made you whole. Hallelujah. My heart, my heart is going out for a young lady tonight. Here comes a young man out of the audience and says, I want to get stoned on Jesus. I'm sorry. But Jesus Christ is concerned about every personal need. There's thousands of people here tonight. But I'm concerned about this young man that's been bound by drugs and wants something from Jesus. He just came from nowhere. I'm going to pray for him. Jesus is going to save him. Jesus is going to deliver him. Right? Amen. Right? Amen. Come here, son. We're going to kneel right here at the foot of the cross. There's room at the cross for everyone. There's room for you. Jesus, he's been stoned on drugs and everything else. Let him get turned Jesus tonight let the power of God break this yoke now save him Jesus son say I accept I accept Jesus Christ Jesus Christ as my Savior as my Savior I confess I confess that Jesus Christ that Jesus Christ is the Son of God is the Son of God now put your hands up son and start thanking God for saving you <laughs> say thank you Jesus for saving you. yes you want to do something go on go on go on go on what are you gonna do you ever see marijuana Jesus! You feel it? I'm stoned. It's heavy, man. Go on and go with Jesus. There's a young lady over here. <laughs> she needs a fix. She needs a fix on heroin. She's been trembling. She's been messed up. Where are you at, dear? The one over there in the invalid section. Bring me that young lady. <laughs> She's been so sick. Been here since 2 o'clock today. She said, Preacher, I gotta have a fix. I gotta have a fix. I gotta have a fix. I believe Jesus is gonna stick a sword, the sword of the Spirit, His Holy Word, into her veins tonight. Come here, dear. This is your night. This is your night. I talked to you a while ago. 
She'd been like this since she was nine and a half years old. Eleven years. Living on drugs. She has no home. <laughs> She walks the streets. Don't turn your snooty new nose up at her. Jesus loves her! Thank God for people that are concerned. Everybody sit down a moment. I'm going to do something. How many ex-drug addicts we have here tonight that has been set free by the power of God? Ever drug, ever ex-drug addict that God has set free. You've been set free by God's power. We have a section of them somewhere. Are you there? I want you, I want you to go to that aisle, come down that stairway, and come down here and help me pray this girl through. We're going to have a Jesus love in. Jesus is going to break the yoke. Thank God for everything that the system is trying to do to help drugs and help drug addicts get free. Thank God for the government programs. They've spent millions of dollars and I suppose they've had a very limited success. But ladies and gentlemen, in spite of all that, here is a testimony to the only true answer to drug addiction, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Young people. Here's a young man that got free in our ministry. Come here, son. $100 a day drug addict. Come up here. Your name is? Brother Lewis. Brother Lewis, you were, you was up to $100 a day on heroin. Yes, I was. God set you free. Yes, he did. He set you free by reading one of our books. One of the books. And God helped you and you're free now. Free. How long has that been? That's been five years ago. Five years ago. Now he's one of the best preachers in the country. <laughs> Hallelujah. Preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Christ is the answer. A compassion explosion is the answer. Jesus is the real thing. Jesus is the only answer. Jesus is the solution. See all these? They know what you're going through. I'm going to pray. Stand back just a little, please, so that camera can reach. Look here, hon. You want Jesus to fix you up? I do. Right now? Yes. Right now. You've been this way since you was nine and a half? Yeah, and I was a Christian at one time. But God's going to set you free right now. Yeah. Everybody stretch your hand this way. Oh, God. You're the only one that can do this. Oh, God. She's in misery and pain now because she needs a fix. Holy Ghost, you fix her up. Holy Ghost, break the yoke now. Touch her. Deliver her. Save her, Lord. Save her, Jesus. Save her from this menace of drug addiction. In the name of Jesus. Take away the pain. Break this yoke. And heal her now. Look here. Don't look down no more. Look here. Look right into my eyes. Don't look down no more. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Is my refuge. Is it, my refuge. He's my help. My is my help. I accept him right now. I accept him right now. As my savior. As my savior. As my deliverer. As my deliverer. Something's happening to you, dear. She's been in miss now this girl's been able to walk, but she's had to sit. You're going to walk. All of these all of these people are going to pray with you and you're going to walk. You can do all things through Christ 
that strengtheneth you. Come on. A couple of you guys get on her side and help her. Help her. Help her. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. Now, wait a minute. Bring her back here. Hallelujah. Look here. Come on. Look here. She's got a beautiful smile on her face now. Look at that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's great to be young. It's really fantastic. It is really great to be young. Our nation will soon celebrate its 200th birthday. But we're not really 195 years old. We're really just a teenage country because the average age of our citizens is only 18 years of age. Never in the history of our country have we had so many young people turned on to Jesus. believe that if we can get millions and millions of young men and women turned on to Jesus Christ, we can change this country. What are the chief interests and concerns of our young people? Number one, it's peace. Everybody say peace. Peace. Say peace. peace. The youth of this nation, like the youth of many nations, they want peace. They want to have the privilege of building their homes and marriage and raising their children. They want the same privilege that you and I and other people have had down through the generations of time. They want peace. And I pray. I pray that God will answer their prayer. But let me warn you tonight, peace is not going to come. Complete peace is not going to come if we just end our wars with foreign nations. Before we can really have peace, we're going to have to experience a compassion explosion and end our wars with ourselves. That is why compassion explosion is God's gift. It's God's gift to us. It's God's gift to your young people. It's God's gift to the middle-aged person. It's God's gift to all people, regardless of their color, regardless of their church background, regardless of their denominational affiliation. There's one answer, and there's one common denominator, and that's Jesus Christ. The young people of our nation are to be highly commended for the stand that many of them have taken in this particular hour. Their outstanding leadership in the theology of ecology, they've taken the lead. And since God made this earth, the land, the sea, the precious air that we breathe, I believe that it is a sin against both earth and God for any man to desecrate and pollute it. <laughs> but I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, there is something worse than the skies and the rivers, and the land. 
being polluted. There's something worse than that pollution. And that is the pollution of man's sinful soul. Therefore, I will lift up my voice and I will cry aloud against all of those villains that would pollute the minds and the hearts of our young people with pornography and drugs. Thou shalt not defile the treasure of our youth. Thou shalt not poison their minds. Thou shalt not poison their hearts with ungodliness, pornography, drug addiction, the works of the flesh. God did never intend for our young people to waste their lives in the jungles of communistic revolution. But God has intended for them to walk in the peaceful paths of Eden. You say, do you believe in revolution? Yes! I believe in a revolution. One that will revolutionize your mind. One that will revolutionize your heart. One that will tear the tradition of man down and inject the power of the Holy Ghost. A spiritual revolution. A few weeks ago, I was the guest of Pat Boone in his house in Beverly Hills. And I was privileged to see in Pat Boone's house as dozens of young Jesus people were baptized in his swimming pool that he had converted into a water baptismal tank. This is the new youth revolution in America. It is not a rebellion against fathers and mothers. It's not even a rebellion against a, just a social order. But the new youth spiritual revolution that is taking place the length and the breadth of our land is a revolution against hypocrisy it's a war against all of these villains that pollute the minds and the hearts of young people. I lift my voice and I cry aloud. I still believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ for it is the power of God and the salvation. As we young people say, he's in a bag, man. What kind of bag are you in? A selfish bag? A bag that's filled with pride? A bag that's filled with self-righteousness? Some folks are in a religious bag. They go to church because it helps them in their business. It helps them with a contact. I might meet somebody there. Why, you hypocrite, you. No wonder young people have been turned off by a foul, hypocritical, churchanity, religious spirit that has no feeling, that is not based on the Bible. Just a social club. No wonder young people are turned off. Some folks are in a black bag.
Some of you are in a lily white honky bag. Some folks are in a ghetto bag. Somebody comes to you outside of the ghetto, you don't want them in your bag. Right on. And you beautiful suburbanites. You got a raise last week. You're not making $5,000 a year now. You're making six, so you moved to the suburb. Now you're in a suburb bag. God said he'd pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And thank God, God is not in a bag. And since he's not in a bag, he can go to the ghetto and do it. He can go to the long hairs and do it. He can go to the young people and do it. He can go to the older people. He can go to the middle class. He can go to the suburb. He can pour out his spirit upon all flesh. The length and the breadth of this land and this compassion explosion will not only break out in America, but it'll break out in the islands of the sea and around the world. Oh, God. You know, a man's true size, his real true size is measured by his capacity to love others. Jesus not only died for his friends, he died for his enemies. That is why Jesus Christ is still the ideal of American youth. That is why Jesus Christ is the supreme person of many of our young people. Because greater love hath no man than he should lay down his life for his friend. Yes, Jesus Christ, he's the solution to every problem. But you have to turn to him. Thousands of you tonight, you've never felt the love of God. Some of you don't know what it is to be born again. You've never let Jesus come into your heart and turn you on. And let old things pass away. So that everything could become new. Hundreds of you here. You once knew Jesus. You once came and made a commitment to Jesus Christ. But is he living in your heart now? Is he ruling in your life now? Is he sitting on the throne of your heart or are you just in a bag? God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. What will it profit a man if he gained the whole world and and then lose his soul, or what will a man give in exchange for his soul, according to the scripture? Every head bowed, please. I am going to pray a prayer of deliverance just for you. You say, will that prayer save me? Oh no. There's only one thing that will save you. That is the blood of Jesus Christ through repentance. But this prayer is going to make 
Satan, the devil, take his hands off of you. And you're going to be free to come to Jesus Christ. Listen to my simple instructions. It's time to come to the cross. There's room for you at the cross. Oh, I know millions have come, but there's room for you. Come out of those top balconies down the stairways here on the main floor. The ushers will escort you and come to the foot of the cross. I am going to pray for every one of you. Come quickly. Come running. Show God your mean business by the way you come. Come out of those balconies. I'll be praying for you while you come. Come right on. Oh God, break the yoke off of the life of every man, woman, boy, and girl tonight. In the name of Jesus, let them kneel at the cross, Lord. Let them find the peace of God. In the name of Jesus, I believe you. Oh God, don't let one boy, one girl, one mother, one father go to hell but standing now in Jesus name